Hey folks, welcome back to Totally Far Out. Today we continue our journey on this strange, mysterious planet as we try to piece the puzzle together. This is Scars Above. Previously, we saw Mike barely hanging on, while Tam has embarked on a quest to uncover the source of the signal that's dictating the actions of these nanotech that has infected Mike. Some kind of installation. The transmission source is beyond that gate ahead. It can't be that easy, can it? How delightfully unoriginal. <laughs> the other Ben sector is closed, protecting itself from an intruder. Your friend is inside. Tam, she must have triggered the lockdown. Is there another way in? Uh, yes, a transit system for materials. Nearest access station is nearby, sending you the location. Better check that transit system then, whatever it is. Hmm, that looks interesting. It's warm to the touch. Thermal amplifiers and emissive materials. Perhaps it's some kind of a personal heating system. I wonder this alien phantom is just another cunning ploy by the custodian to pull the old stab in the back trick. <laughs> you can never let your guard down, can you? It's always twist after twist in this game. Wow, what a weather whiplash going from hot and humid jungle to chilly mountain peaks. It's like jumping from sauna to a freezer. <laughs> This game has got me hooked. The slow unraveling of the mystery has me on the edge of the seat. The immersive visuals and the intuitive controls make it joy to play. I'm excited about what happens next. I'm ready for more thrills and surprises. It's freezing here. Well, well, well. Looks like the game just turned the chill factor. Dealing with hypothermia adds a whole new level of urgency to the adventure.
Log entry. The plant is capable of burning at extreme temperatures, hotter than ignited pure oxygen. It will temporarily emit intense heat. Ah, isn't that conveniently placed? <laughs> Ah, talk about ramping up the difficulty. The arctic level design and hypothermia elements are already enough to make any gamer shiver. But adding alien wildlife into the mix? Oh boy, the game is really trying to test your survival skills, isn't it? Heat blast could melt it. Oh, come on, why isn't it working? Ah, uh, oh, I need to keep an eye on the ammo also. We do have limited heat blasters. Oh boy, things are getting... Ah, let's see. Very difficult. Come on, more of them. I'm so sick and tired of them. They are really getting on my nerves. They are like boulders with bad attitude. <laughs> Oh, you got to be kidding me. I have to hit them at a particular angle. Come on, man.
I think so. I need to venture inside now because I don't have any more fire breathing plants. <laughs> What happened to this big fella? Is he like frozen or something? Well, it seems hypothermia also affects these big boys. This is not good. Definitely not good. Ah, oh, man, inches away from safety. Ah, oh, this is bad. This is really bad. Oh, I'm getting so much practice at respawning in this game that I'm starting to feel like a master. <laughs> Who needs to be a pro where you can be an ultimate noob spawner? <laughs> I like the fact that the game has a bit of challenging gameplay. As a gamer, you need to learn from your mistakes and develop skills to progress through the game. The developers have definitely found a sweet spot between a game that's so hard it makes you want to quit and a one that's so easy that puts you to sleep. It's challenging enough to keep you interested, but not so tough that it feels impossible to progress.
Sometimes I feel that gameplay can get in the way of good storytelling. I mean, I'm interested in the story. But if the gameplay becomes needlessly difficult, it takes away from the experience. It's like trying to walk a tightrope between enjoying the story and having fun playing. If the gameplay is too hard, it ruins the story. But if it's too easy, it's not exciting to play. It's a definitely a tricky balance to maintain. The game has definitely upped the ante with the endless array of alien creatures, limited ammo and now even harsher environments. It's becoming increasingly uncomfortable to deal with all of these challenges at once. But somehow I feel hardcore gamers would love this. They would definitely love a challenge and you know try to beat the game in the most efficient way possible. Log entry. A highly advanced device, most probably a part of an integrated network. It is seemingly capable of regulating the meteorological conditions of the area around it. I wonder this alien technology, is it from the custodians or the alien phantoms we are seeing? We still have very little information on either group, their intention and what drove them to bring us on this strange planet. We are slowly piecing together the information about these, these various fractions but we're still struggling to see the full picture. This must be the transit system. It is inactive because of the lockdown. What now? The transit center is up the mountain. Get there and I will be able to reactivate the system. I'm sending you the location. It is a long walk.
the heck is that? These alien creatures somehow manage to adapt, develop or mutate to fit the environment. Perhaps this is the result of genetic experience being conducted by the custodian. Who knows, either way it's clear these creatures are a force to reckon with. As I wander through the alien planet, I can't shake the feeling that there is more to the custodian than meets the eye. What if he is not the villain of the story, but rather a pawn in a greater scheme? Perhaps he was originally appointed by the alien phantoms to help them conduct their experiments. And then things went wrong. Or maybe custodian was the native of this planet and was initially helping these aliens before they turned against it. Ah, the possibilities are endless, aren't they? I'm not a big fan of the Arctic level designs in games. It almost feels like a cheat code for me when developers use that. You know, those frigid icy game levels, they're all the same. It's like surrounded by endless white. And sometimes the game feels like it is so dull, so boring that it's like watching paint dry. I wonder why we are not getting affected by hypothermia now. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not that cold anymore. <laughs> An 
inoperative console, probably operating the rings. It lacks a power source. You know, sometimes I feel the game really fleshed out Mike and Dan's character. But Kate, not so much. Who is she? Where is she from? And most importantly, does she have a boyfriend? <laughs> I'm clueless here. It's like she's going through the motions of eliminating all these creatures without any sense of emotion or depth. There must be a way to cross this somehow. If I were in her shoes, in a freaking strange planet, I would freak out and pray for a savior. But then again, the nerd in me would have been really curious about everything around me. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Kate feels a bit unreal and one-dimensional. Look, don't get me wrong. I like the fact she's using science and logic to decode what's going on this planet and that side of Kate is something which is appealing to me. But there's nothing more to her. It's almost like she's a programmed character in a video game. And I don't feel the emotions, the hunger, the fear, the, you know, the various aspects that makes a human being. Is this some sort of a dead end? It almost feels like I'm going around in circles, like a hamster on a wheel. <sighs> Did we miss a turn, maybe a cave or a clue somewhere along the way? <sighs> we need to figure things out before we lose our minds. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. Bear with me. I'm trying to channel my inner Sherlock. This is dandy, isn't it? I'm starting to feel like I'm a dog chasing his own tail. <laughs> ah, come on, what's next? Well, 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 look who finally woke up from their brain freeze. Groot was right there in front of us the whole time. And we were busy daydreaming about whether Kate has a boyfriend or not. <laughs>
even though I'm not fond of Arctic level designs. But you know what? The developers have really spiced things up by adding some alien industrial structures to the mix. The result is visually intriguing. It's a fusion of dark metallic tones and pure white snow. It almost reminds me of those ink blot tests. It's stunning, isn't it? Log entry. The device seems to be a substation used to accumulate and transfer power. Oh boy, you again. Ah, oh, I'm so tired of you. Oh, come on. Now hypothermia affects me. Oh, man. Ah. Oh, what a perfect timing, isn't it? Oh. Looks like going around in circle has made me as sharp as a butter knife. I mean, it's not like I had any tools at my disposal. I may have forgotten my gamer instincts in my other pants. <laughs> Next thing you know, I'll be playing with the controller upside down like a total noob. Ah, here we go again. Let's hope our brain is not on a vacation. It'll be a fascinating experience to see the benefits of the game's save system for the first time. I'm curious about the power source I collected. I think so it should remain in my position, even after my untimely death in the game. Oh, it should be interesting, and well, at least it will save me some hardship. I wish this sensor, this sonar had the capacity to detect even underground enemies and creatures. You know, that would have given me a tactical advantage. Right now, I'm just waiting for them to pop up and then react.
I wish we had more ammo means clearly I'm preferring Vera over all other weapons. It's so sleek and it's so high tech and the energy based ammunition is, is really doing its job. So let's find out whether we have the power source or not. Oh, we do! Ah, uh, that is so effective. I really love the game's safe system. It is well thought out, well placed and well managed. the rotating rings to bridge the gap by locking them into place. I should look around for a way. I could group the rotating rings to make a bridge. to put our thinking hats on but it's pretty simple I think so I need to freeze the water there and that should help the cause let's find out Maybe I can freeze the water yeah my thoughts exactly Kate You know, as someone who prioritized story over endless hours of battle, I admit I'm playing this game at an easier mode. But hey, I'm very curious. I wonder what Dark Souls fans will think of this game. Would they find this game challenging enough? Means personally, I believe if you crank the difficulty level, the Dark Souls enthusiast would appreciate this game's engaging combat and find it just as enjo enjoyable as the beloved franchise. It's a shame Scars Above didn't really receive the same level of hype for its challenging gameplay. Because the developers have done a really good job.
power sources are required to open the hatch. Ah, darn it. Ah, this detour is taking forever and a day. Ah, it's like the developers want me to rack up my step count. <laughs> means seriously this game can be really stunning at times the developers definitely have really vivid imagination it's like you almost want to be on that planet despite all the dangers which may be lurking around like this fella huh Log entry. A substance secreted by the skin freezes in the air, replenishing the ice armor. The creature is also capable of rapid regeneration, but shooting the heart will interrupt the process. Ah, geez, that alpha ape creature is getting more screen time than the lead actor. <laughs> Ah, first it had the rock-like armor in the jungle, then suddenly it shed it all in the caves, and now, in the freezing cold, it's rocking an ice armor. I mean, the developers are definitely recycling these creatures. I wonder if this is smart or plain laziness. Well, you be the judge. Is this device? Gravity? Should locate the main components. This seems to be an energy converter. Looks 
like a complicated circuit. This is a measuring unit. It's probing the field's integrity. Energy field feels warm. This emitter is maintaining the sphere. This technology is made to affect the gravity around it. Amazing. Oh, that looks like a gravity well kind of a weapon. Uh, another tool to play with. <laughs> Well, right, because my mind is not exactly the multitasking type. <laughs> it's hard enough to run away and shoot without getting my wires crossed, let alone keep an eye out for the sources of heat. I mean, this isn't exactly your average day of work. <laughs> uh, maybe I should just stick to simpler tasks like stapling papers and answering phone calls.
way to use the gravity bubble. Wow, I mean, this is gonna be effective and useful in the future. This gravity bubble could be game changing here. There is a gap in the laser fence, but it's moving too fast. Perhaps there's a way to slow it down. Log entry. The device seems to be a substation used to accumulate and transfer power. Log entry. A highly advanced device most probably a part of an integrated network. It is seemingly capable of regulating the meteorological conditions of the area around it. gadget I made could be of use with that laser fence. Now what the hell is an omnivorous colossal? I mean, uh, what horrors? these aliens were up to man but there is no mention of the custodian so i'm not really sure who is doing this it just says alien writing i'm having doubts on the alien phantoms there is definitely more to this story let's hope we can find out sooner rather than later
This feels like an endless gauntlet of creatures to defeat. I feel like I'm in a never-ending battle royal, taking waves after waves of enemies. Ah, my fingers are starting to clamp up with the button smashing. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait, dude. Uh, if I save now, these guys will respawn. No, no, going back, going back. Don't worry. Thanks for watching this gameplay video of Scars Above. Stay tuned for the next part where we will dive deeper into the game's terrifying world and continue our search for Tam. Who knows what horrors await us next? Till next time, this is Fragabee signing out.